When choosing a cloud service provider for your enterprise mission critical workloads, there are four things that you should consider. Performance and predictability. Your cloud service provider should have service level agreements covering manageability and performance to ensure that resources are not oversubscribed or overprovisioned. Deployment and migration options. The choice between private, public, hybrid cloud, zero downtime migration options, and support for the broadest range of infrastructure choices, including bare metal and the latest in high performance compute and GPUs. Network architecture. You should look for a software defined layer three network topology or isolated network virtualization, which takes network and IO off of the server stack. Security. A security first design, which reduces the risk from hypervisor, is resilient to firmware based attacks and offers a comprehensive set of security solutions from core all the way through edge services. In today's workshop, you will learn why Oracle is the best place for your enterprise and mission critical workloads. With one click provisioning for Oracle and third party applications, including over 4,500 certified ISV applications from our marketplace. You can quickly bring your application into Oracle Cloud infrastructure, then dynamically scale that application horizontally and vertically, and finally extend that application with rich PaaS services, including things like intelligent bots and MI-driven analytics. Let's take a look at the demonstration to find out what makes Oracle so unique. Today, we're looking at a retail organization that needs to scale rapidly due to increased demand for online ordering. This organization needs to quickly port their application to the cloud as is to support its existing infrastructure, databases, operating systems, and processes. Once in the cloud, they need to elastically scale the app to meet increased demand, set up high availability and disaster recovery configurations, and extend the app with cloud native tools rather than expanding their existing code base. In this demonstration, we will show you how customers can easily migrate existing on-premise custom applications or ISV applications into Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We'll walk through how customers can use intuitive open source tooling to migrate custom images, accelerate dev and test cycles, and leverage out-of-the-box integrations and analytics tools rather than retooling existing infrastructure. So imagine that we have John, an infrastructure architect, who's looking to move his retail company's online storefront to the cloud. First, John needs to capture a snapshot of his existing on-premise application and import it into the cloud. From there, he's going to provision a virtual machine with that custom image and all necessary underlying networking and infrastructure. The next step requires making this application highly available with a disaster recovery configuration. We'll use open source tooling such as rsync to copy this VM to a separate region and then use DNS services and traffic management steering policies to create a failover mechanism should one of the primary nodes go down. Finally, We'll leverage Oracle Integration Cloud, Oracle Analytics Cloud, and Autonomous Data Warehouse to extend their current capabilities without having to expand their existing code base. In conjunction with all of this, we'll be leveraging security tools such as Cloud Access Security Broker, DataSafe, and others to make sure that the application is safe and secure as it's being moved to the cloud. So from here, let's take a look at how this takes place within the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console. So I've already imported the custom image into OCI. From here, it becomes a matter of spinning up the virtual machine. And from here, I simply need to supply a number of parameters to create the virtual machine with a custom image. So I'll give it a name, and then I'll choose an image or operating system. Now, this is a major differentiator for Oracle Cloud because we have a huge breadth and depth of images to choose from. Some of them are Oracle images, so things such as our JDE environments. Some of them are platform images, such as Windows Server 2012, 2016. Some of them are partner images such as Altair PBS Professional and others. We also have different flavors of virtual machines should you so choose. So things like high performance compute, GPUs, bare metal, and others. In this instance, we actually want a custom image, the OS Commerce demo snapshot that I've imported. So from here, we have OS Commerce demo. I'll select this image and import it in. I'll then choose an availability domain, which you can think of as like a virtual data center. I'll choose a shape and then provision all underlying infrastructure. So the virtual cloud network, the subnet that it's going to be in, whether it'll have a public or private address, security rules, route rules, and others. We've already taken the liberty actually of spinning up this virtual machine. And from here, we can see that it's already running and online. Once I'm here, the next step to is to validate whether the OS Commerce application is running. 
So we can see our storefront right here and I have a couple of different movie titles. Now that my OS Commerce application is online and running, the next step becomes making this application highly available with a disaster recovery configuration. From a persona perspective, this would be something that would be highly important, not only to John as the VP of infrastructure, but also to anyone who's a CTO or CISO. Making sure that that application is resilient to any type of underlying issue is critical. And the way that we're going to accomplish this is with a combination of traffic steering policies and DNS capabilities. Now the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console itself has a whole breadth and depth of DNS tools. If I go under the networking console right here, I can go down to DNS zone management and take a look at what the offerings are. So from here, I can see any zones that I'm currently managing. I can see any load balancers that I have spun up. I can manage any VPNs, IPsec VPNs that I have configured. And I can also create traffic management steering policies. That in this instance is what we're going to do. I've already taken the liberty of creating a secondary node, which is essentially a copy of the initial OS commerce instance that has been lifted and shifted to the cloud. We used rsync to make sure that the data was copied between those two instances and the data integrity was maintained. The next step becomes if there is any issues with the primary node, creating a policy that will send traffic to that secondary one. So from here, I can simply click create traffic management steering policy and I have a number of options. I can choose things like load balancer, failover, geolocation steering, ASN steering, or IP prefix steering. In this instance, what I'm looking for is the actual failover option, which is going to redirect traffic to the next highest priority node for when that primary server is unavailable. So in this instance, I'll give it a name such as OS Commerce name. I'll give it a TTL, in this case, a standard one of 60 seconds. And then I'm going to start configuring my answer pool, which essentially are going to have the records that we're going to be using as DNS queries. So in this case, I'll choose something like a primary node, and it will be my OS Commerce primary. I'm going to choose an A record and just paste the IP address that I had uh, from the previous tab. So let's say it's 132.110.11.160. So I would have this primary node here, and I would choose a secondary node for it to fail over to. So I'm going to choose secondary node and create OS Commerce secondary node. And again, choosing a record type of A and put our data uh, in there as well. So let's do 132.111.12.160, let's say. I can then choose the pool priority and attach a health check uh, to make sure that I'm monitoring the availability of any given target um, within this failover option. Finally, I would attach any domains should I so need and tag it with the appropriate resources. Once I've created this policy, my application is now highly available and has a disaster recovery configuration, all within a matter of minutes. Within the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console, again, it is quite easy to provision and create these highly available disaster recovery applications. We'll be using Oracle Integration Cloud to map the existing data within the MySQL database that is native to the OS Commerce application, the destination data within an autonomous data warehouse instance. Now, a huge differentiator here is that autonomous data warehouse instances can elastically scale up and down for CPU and storage. They also have self-patching, self-repairing, and self-securing capabilities to take manual labor out of the equation. Now, I've already taken the liberty of mapping these two together, and we've extracted all necessary rows, columns, and tables, and inserted those into the autonomous data warehouse instance. From here, we can connect to Oracle Analytics Cloud, where we can get deep visualizations into our data. So within this console itself, I have some sample visualizations such as sales by regions and clusters, sales by seasons, deal size, what have you. Should you so choose, you can also leverage prepackaged artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to get deeper insight into what's going on with your data. Finally, we're using security products to make sure that the application is safe and secure as it's being moved to the cloud. We're leveraging cloud access security broker to scan for malicious and suspicious user activity within the cloud environment. We're leveraging DataSafe to make sure that any data that isn't being put into an autonomous data warehouse instance is masked and redacted appropriately. Finally, at the networking tier, we have taken the liberty of architecting our networks so that NICs themselves are not in the boxes, which prevents against things such as hypervisor jackings and other malicious attacks. As we've seen in today's demonstration, Oracle Cloud is the best place to run your enterprise mission-critical workloads. 
we offer the broadest set of migration and deployment options in the industry, including some things that are very unique to Oracle, infrastructure that runs itself, like autonomous Linux and autonomous database, and our world-class database offerings, such as Exadata Cloud Service or Exadata Cloud at Customer. Our superior network design offers a flat, off-box virtualized network that guarantees no oversubscribing of resources, offering you unmatched performance and predictability as compared to other cloud vendors. And finally, security. Our second generation cloud was designed with security in the DNA of the architecture rather than an afterthought. We offer firmware that is resilient to attacks, supply chain security, encryption by default everywhere, and world-class security services such as identity and access management, cloud access security broker, or next generation web application firewalls. We hope you enjoyed the demonstration today and we look forward to working with your team to move some workloads into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure.